What's up, everybody? This is Bevo, and I am sitting here today on this beautiful Sunday with Elena Capitaneus. Uh, she is the owner, the founder of this beautiful establishment in downtown Dunedin, Florida called Dunedin Coffee Company. Dunedin Coffee Company. Yes. And Elena, today, thank you very much for taking the time out and sitting with us. Absolutely. And um, we just want to pick your brain a little bit. Sure. Have a conversation and talk a little bit about who you are and how you got to this place where you're running this shop. Yes. Well, thank you for wanting to talk to me about it. Absolutely. Um, one of my biggest passions for sure in life is um, business and getting a chance to be creative in that. And um, obviously, when something works out and it's successful, that's an added bonus. So yeah, I'm happy to talk about it and kind of share. Cool. So let's start with Tell us a little bit about you and then move into, if you will, a little, how you got to this part, moving into this shop, where the idea came from. Why a bakery? Why a coffee shop? Sure. Um, well, I'm a native to this area, kind of born and raised between Dunedin and Safety Harbor. Mm -hmm. um, my parents owned restaurants and, um, you know, we were so involved in that restaurant life. I mean, we lived above our restaurant and apartments above it and we kind of worked the restaurant for my whole life so it was um i was exposed to this business from a very young age okay. um my mother was a teacher um, but she stopped teaching to kind of be involved in in my father's restaurant so um, i had the teaching aspect for my mom i had the restaurant tour side for my dad nice. and um, when i was in high school i knew that i loved the business mm -hmm. i didn't love all the work that went into the business because it was a very consuming <laughs> type of business to be right, in i right. mean you breathed it ate it drank it slept it i right. mean it, it never day ended day daily out. yeah right. um so I loved it, but I, I wasn't sure that that was the lifestyle that I wanted. Mm -hmm. um, so I said, you know what, I can open up a business without a degree. I don't have to have a business degree. So I went to school for teaching. I got my uh, degree in teaching and I figured, you know, if my business dreams don't work out, I can always land on this teaching degree and, you know, make a make a life for myself with that. Um, so I went to school and my whole time in school, I would sketch restaurants and uh, mm -hmm. I would draw out restaurants, I would have graph paper, and I'd cut out my equipment and size it to, uh, to scale. <laughs> and so people in my classes were like, why are you in this education program when you're sitting here drawing restaurants? And right. I said, you know, I can do this without a degree. I just need to have my mind and my creativity, but I can't be a teacher and earn that salary without a degree. So that's right. my backup plan. Sure. It was always my backup plan. So um, I got my degree and I went into teaching and quickly realized that I love these children, but this is not for me. Right. Um, it was very um, kind of in a box. Mm -hmm. And um, so from that moment on, I, I knew I had to get out of it and uh, kind of pursue my dream of opening up a restaurant. So the coffee shop came about because I didn't want that um, that demand of a full service restaurant. Right. So I said, how else can I um, practice this hospitality business that I love, but it's not so demanding. Um, I absolutely love coffee. I love people. So instead of doing a full blown restaurant, why not a coffee shop and bakery where people can gather, sure. talk and enjoy good coffee? Because that's why I wake up in the morning to right. have my cup of coffee. Right. So um, so. Anyways, um, I started teaching in my early 20s. I taught for a few years. Um, I was able to get out of teaching and work under a really great chef and manage some really great restaurants oh, okay. and open some restaurants for some groups of partners. And then I realized, well, you know, this is long hours again. I think I'm gonna go back to teaching and try something a little different. So taught older kids and realized, nope, this still is not what I love. The closer and, they get to adults, uh, they yeah, the more weird, right? Exactly. It was awkward <laughs> middle school, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but um, yeah, it wasn't too long before I realized after a few years that I, I've really got to get out of this profession for good and I've got to figure out something that makes me happy. Um, so it was actually one major incident in my life that happened um, that really kind of made me jump. Mm -hmm. um, my dad was my best friend. He passed about four years ago, about 10 months before I opened this business. Wow. And when that happened, I said, life is way too short for me to be mm. doing something that I don't enjoy. Yeah. And um, I'm not going to do it anymore. So 
this business didn't line up exactly at that timing. But um, I said, you know, if I can't open my coffee shop right now, because as I would try in my 20s to open up something, the doors would close and the doors would close. Right. But I never stopped trying. I would always draft a business plan. It would always look a little different every time. Mm -hmm. I would always look for investors and kind of plan it, and but the doors would close. So I figured, let me sell real estate because I really love real estate. So I, I left teaching, started selling real estate. And um, 10 months into that, this opportunity came to be. And um, I was I like, all right, that. well, now here it is. I'm going to put everything I have into it. Mm -hmm. It was scary because mm -hmm. you take everything you own to try to do something you don't know if it's going to work um, technically. Right. But in my heart, I knew it was going to work. I was very secure with the location and nice. with my concept because nice. I had been thinking about it for, you know, years from 18 to 33. And not just thinking about like drawing it and yes. visualizing it and it it's crazy. This has been a big topic for me the, the last couple of years as far as the last couple of weeks, rather, just the visualization mm -hmm. of where you want to see yourself. So I'm super into that part yeah. of human thinking right now. So sure. uh, absolutely. This is resonating very well, much so with me right now. So love that. Yeah, I think it is really important because, you know, um, especially creative people, mm -hmm. we dream of things, we think of things, we uh, it never ends, right. honestly, in my mind. Right. I don't know about anybody else's mind, but I'm constantly conjuring up something, an idea, um, mm -hmm. a plan. Um, <laughs> so what I did was when that tra transition happened from teaching to selling real estate, I knew real estate was a lot better than teaching and I enjoyed it a lot more, but it wasn't my final destination. So I actually created a vision board. Okay. Um, I went, I got a board. I still have it hanging in my house today. Um, and I kind of drew out index cards of everything I wanted from the kind of boat I wanted to a house. I put a house in downtown Dunedin and by the grace of God, you know, I was able to land that dream about 10 months ago. And on one other index card was a business in downtown Dunedin. And I've got probably about six other ones from having family dinner every Sunday mm -hmm. to traveling somewhere out of the country once a year. Mm -hmm. um, everything that I could possibly think of that had value to me and that I wanted to make a lifestyle. So you went specific, but you didn't drill all the way down into, it sounds like you, you, you had the house, you want the house, you wanted the business, mm -hmm. you knew where you wanted to have them, right. but did you drill down even further into it's going to be run like this and it's going to, the house has to look like this or mm -hmm. is it was it just like a a overarching broad stroke of here's what i want mm -hmm. i don't really know the particulars yet but this is what i want is it more that or did you know specifically everything put into place i think a little bit of both mm -hmm. okay. um i I knew, for example, where I wanted my business. Okay. Um, it wasn't good enough for me to open in a strip plaza on the side of US 19. Right. My location was really important to me. Mm -hmm. um, my location of my home was really important to me, where I lived. So it wasn't just, oh, I want a house. Oh, I want a business. Oh, I want a boat. Like it's a specific boat. It's a specific house, maybe not the exact address, but right. in the, what town etc my business you know maybe not specifically how big or um what it, color paint's going to be on the inside mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. um there was a general vision there okay. um but i had taken time like i said to think about these things for a long time and okay. kind of organize yeah. those thoughts that makes sense and so how how important was or is still being able to visualize those things and then from that step is how important is taking the action for for you because mm -hmm. I, a lot of the times i run into and i've been there myself where you're trying to figure out how to do a thing right right um but then you over sometimes you over plan it mm -hmm. too much and you think about it you think about it you think about it and you get to this point where it's almost kind of done because right. you thought about it so much right what's that next step for you how did you figure out how to take action into that next step and to start implementing your your vision at that point sure i think that's a really good question um personally um my mom calls me a risk taker nice. and i always say um i'm a dreamer with a backup plan okay um so to me the reality of something is very important but like you mm -hmm. said if you overthink something i was actually just t talking to a couple this weekend when we were discussing the same topic and she's married to a man that is very black and white 
very numbers oriented. Right. Um, where people like myself, maybe us, I don't want to categorize you, Brian, but I can be category. very gray. I'm the same way. I can be very gray. Yeah. There's not a black and there's not a white. Mm -hmm. I like to think outside the box and to give certain things a different consideration mm -hmm. than black mm -hmm. and white. Mm -hmm. So, um, so the husband was dealing with the black and whites, the numbers, the logic, the wife was a dreamer. Mm -hmm. And I said, look, this is good because there's balance here. Mm -hmm. When you dream, you have to understand the reality of numbers right. and, and, and actually having a profitable business. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there's always that question mark. Um, so there has to be a point where you kind of let loose on the practical, on the black and white, the mm -hmm, numbers, mm -hmm. and say, you know what, this is my dream and I'm gonna jump with right. two feet in, not with right. one foot, you know, kind of hanging on here, yeah. but you give everything you have because if you don't jump in with two feet, I think that's where people go wrong. Yeah. So I, when I opened this business, this was my life. I was here from five o'clock in the morning till 11, 30, 12 o'clock at night. And I did that for a solid year until I felt comfortable to start giving things away to other people. Nice. So I think, um, I think you're right. I think we do have to plan, but there's a time where we have to say, okay, I'm going to be a risk taker because business people are risk takers. Um, and you just have to jump in. You got to jump in every time. Yeah. And you know, and, and sometimes some people are better than, at it than others. But I think ultimately, if you are an entrepreneur, just in the core, you have to get good at just jumping in Yes. and you may fail. There is that question mark sure. some of the time, right? But you absolutely fail if you don't just jump in. Absolutely. Let me ask you about culture. Okay. Right? Um, specifically in your business. Mm -hmm. We come here all the time, not as much as I used to, or mm -hmm. but I, I still want to get back. But we come here a lot and your employees, every the vibe here seems curated, mm -hmm. right? Like you've it's the, it's the vibe that you want in this place, yes. right? All the way down to just the decor, the way that everything's arranged. And that's probably because you drew it out, like <laughs> you said you did for many years, but all the way down to your, your employees. Like, did you think about how you want them to be able to function in this space as well mm -hmm. in the time that you're here and in the time that you're not here? How does that work? It's a really great question. Um, I wanted this space to be a reflection of me. Mm -hmm and the people that work here to be a reflection of me. Um, so for me personally, I hired to character. Gotcha. Um, I didn't hire to ability or experience. Okay. Um, so somebody's personality and their values and mm. their core uh, was important to me when I was hiring. Mm. Um, so I spent a lot of time in the hiring process and I spend a lot of time training my staff. So I tell them in the beginning, listen, if you don't like to be micromanaged, you probably don't want to work here, not forever, but in the beginning, for the first six to eight weeks, I'm all over them, explaining to them where our art comes from, um, where our coffee comes from, mm -hmm. um, how we make drinks. I mean, there's recipes and procedures for everything because mm -hmm. it has to be the same way every single time every and time. how important that is to me, mm -hmm. um, that not only the service is fantastic, but the product is consistent. Mm -hmm. So I spent a lot of time training and I said, after six to eight weeks, I don't want to micromanage you. I will not micromanage you because I don't have time to micromanage you. Right. So I will give you my whole self for six to eight weeks to make sure you know everything and you'll be hyper trained. And then this way I know um, not only that do you know how to make the product the way I want it, but that you're engaging with the guests the way I want you to, that you're being respectful, that um, you are encountering people yeah. with a positive attitude. And um, it's just an expectation that mm -hmm, I have mm -hmm. and there's no way around that expectation with me. And if I see, you know, growing a staff and um, training a staff and um, kind of being the leader of a team right. um, is a lot of work. It just doesn't end after the six to eight weeks of training. You know, mm -hmm, if you mm -hmm. see there's a behavior going on that, you know, hey, you know, what's happening with this service that I'm seeing or this team attitude that I'm seeing, you know, you have to take a break and sit down with your employees, whether it's one on one or as a team and kind of work through it. So there's a lot of that team building and growing going on, um, you know, in the mix of everything. Do you do so the way I like how you mentioned addressing problems, mm -hmm. do you address those problems quickly or do you how much do you let it play out before you jump in and you say, hey, we need to address this problem right now just to make sure it doesn't get off brand and off and out of the culture that, that you've created? Sure. Um, 
Well, I think the, the basis is my employees know that I care for them, I respect them. I mm -hmm. even go to the point to say that I, I love them. I genuinely do. Like I, they're, uh, um, they're important to me. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think they know that. So whenever there is a concern, um, I pretty much confront it right away yeah. uh, with grace yeah. and uh, understanding and empathy to kind of figure out where they're coming from, what's mm -hmm. happening. Is there something mm -hmm. happening at home? Is there something happening in their personal life? Or what is it that they're bringing to the workplace? Yeah. You know, and usually yeah. when they know that I'm concerned about that, you know, they'll open up and we can kind of move through it. And again, set down the expectation that in these four walls, right. we need to be doing X, Y, and Z for our guests, okay. you know? So, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. And because it's always one of those things where um, even just from my perspective where I'm, I'm getting it to this point where I want to start working with other people and bringing in interns and seeing what it's like to work, work out of side of myself mm -hmm. and, and Mason and, and this small group of people that I'm working with of the, one of the first things I do think about is how am I going to address, um, conflicts or issues or, sure. or when's the best time to, is it immediately? Is it, do I wait a little bit? I don't know, right? So it's it's always been a question, right? And and, and knowing that you take care of those, and it's, it it seems like that's just your style of communication, yeah, within the business. It seems so. I think you're right. I think teaching has helped me a lot with that. Uh, um, <laughs> um, to me, I want to. Uh, really assess the situation, see what's happening. Mm -hmm. But they know, as much as they know that I care for them and love them, right. they know that <laughs> this business is my baby. Right, right. Uh, I'm very serious about right. it. So, you know, you know, we don't go out and hang out after work. There is a definite boundary of employee to employer relationship. Sure. Because I think sometimes what happens is people want to become really close with their employees mm -hmm. um, where there's nothing wrong. I'm very close with my employees, but there's that that there's that line um, where I can say, hey, look, you know, I'm, I'm seeing this deficiency or I'm mm -hmm. seeing this issue mm -hmm. and we need to correct it. Yeah. And I don't feel like I'm at that point their friend and oh, my goodness, I don't want to say something. I don't want to hurt their feelings. There's that drawn line for sure. Yeah, it's so important. And it's and it's good advice, too, because a lot of the times I think that might be an issue when I'm thinking about other people that get into this business and um, other places I've been and you see what bad service looks like. Right. And because it, it usually, I think it stems from how the culture was set from the sure. top down. Right. And um, but yeah, very interesting uh, uh, outtake on that. Um, lastly, or two questions actually. Okay. What advice would you give someone else mm. that wants to come into this type of environment mm -hmm. as far as owning in a, a, a coffee shop, owning this type of uh, place, coffee shop, bakery, mm -hmm. restaurant, eatery, whichever. Sure. What advice would you give that type of that person? And where are you going next? Because I know you, just, <laughs> you, you, you said at the top of this thing that there is you're always thinking and you're always pushing. So what's next? Yes. For you. Those are great questions. Um, the first thing I would say to anybody that's going into this business, mm -hmm. it's a hard business. And if you're not passionate about it, um, don't think about getting into it. Right. If you're passionate about it, it requires a lot of you. Um, so if you are, then it is one of the most rewarding businesses you mm -hmm. can be in because not only um, are you creating product that makes people happy, um, you get to create relationships with people, and that is huge. That is the biggest benefit I feel like from owning this business is I have created so many relationships like with you and Mason and um, all my other customers that come into this place yeah. and I feel like I know them by name. You know, I have customers that come to my house and plant trees and water my plants. <laughs> it's crazy. It's like, That's you know, amazing. if they're going out of town, hey, Lena, right. we're not going to be here. Just wanted you to know so you don't get worried. That kind of thing. So that sense of community no, is huge, cool. yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, and I love that because I feel like as we've um, our generation, our culture has kind of um, evolved into this kind of existence mm -hmm. where we feel like we can do this life on our own mm -hmm. and really seeing the benefits of community and relationships mm -hmm. um, that develop not only between myself and my and my uh, customers, but between the customers in the shop. Right. Um, it's, it's really neat. So um, definitely I would um, advise someone 
if you're passionate, then um, jump in. If you're not, stop right there. Right. Um, secondly, think it out. Do your homework. Um, I just didn't do this. I worked under chefs. I managed really successful restaurants so I could understand the numbers. Um, I put myself in training situations um, so that I could walk into this and, and do it successfully. Right. So um, do your homework. And um, before you open your business, create balance, um, build it in. Because that's one of the things that I learned with this business um, is that it's extremely demanding. And unless you have your boundaries set, mm -hmm. it will consume you and mm -hmm. you will burn out. Mm -hmm. um, so one of my things that I did right off the bat was I was closing on Sundays. And for me, personally, it was just a church and family and rest day for me. Right. Um, and people were like, Elena, why would you close on Sundays? A coffee shop is popping on a Sunday. Why? And I was like, listen. I was like, because that's what's valuable to me. Right. And um, they're like, well, why don't you close on a Monday or a Tuesday? And I said, well, what am I going to do on a Monday or Tuesday when the rest of my family, usually people are off Saturdays and Sundays, right? Right. Um, what am I going to do by myself at home? <laughs> Wash laundry? I mean, you know, on Sundays, you know, it's a family day and people are off and you can have a pool party or yeah. go on a boat or do something right. with the people you love, you know? So I built that in. So um, I think that's it. Make sure you're passionate. Uh, do your homework and um, build balance into build your balance. business. I yeah. love those. I love those so much. Got my wheels spinning. I got, <laughs> got my wheels spinning. And lastly, where are you going? Where, what's yeah. the, what's the, what, where, what, what are some other goals that sure. you've set for yourself past this establishment? Um, I think for myself, the next season of my life is um, taking care of Elena season. Okay. Um, and um, I've gotten to a point where I really want to figure out how to continue to be successful mm -hmm. um, in my relationships with people financially mm -hmm. and um, have more time. So I'm all over the place. I'm kind of in my mind trying to learn from my business. Right. Um, some of the things I've learned from my business is um, it's a very high labor business to run. Mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of employees. Um, we went from two employees to 13 employees. Wow. Um, I have two pastry chefs and um, that's a high bill yeah. at the end of the month. Right. Um, it doesn't even compare to the rent. People are like, right. oh, you must pay really high rent to be in Dunedin. But I'm like, yeah, that's yeah. not even what's expensive. It's the people. So I'm constantly thinking of better business concepts. Mm -hmm. um, how can I create a business that um, can have can bring in more at the end of the month. Yeah. What things should I have changed or should I have done differently? Mm -hmm. I think for this business, it's perfect because this right. is exactly what this town needed. It really is. Um, so for here, it's perfect and I wouldn't change a thing. Um, but if I was to grow a brand and take it somewhere else, I'd probably simplify it. Okay. Um, I'm thinking about um, possibly getting into the coffee roasting business mm. um, to kind of be able to, instead of being um, in the retail grind, to um, get into that end of the business where I can focus on, it'll be a slower pace, building accounts, learning how to roast coffee. Right. Um, and it would also kind of be a sister to this business. Yeah, it'd be more exporting at that point. You're right. More distribution at that point. Yep. Yeah, yeah. you'd be able so, to sell it outwards. That's yes, cool. exactly. Kind yeah. of building those accounts and kind of yeah. taking it easy a little bit more. Um, but I don't know, I'm always thinking. I mean, I've got different concepts of restaurants on my mind. I've got traveling on my mind. I've knew got it. apparel brand on my I mind. Knew it. It's crazy. I don't know. I wish my brain would stop, Brian, but it just, no. it doesn't. No. So no. I don't know what that last question is. That's awesome. It could be anything. The yeah. best answer. Thank and, you. Uh, so again, thank you very much. And I am looking forward to whatever the next chapter is uh, with regard to other endeavors you have going on Thank because you. we enjoy this one so much and I think um, it's worth it for people to know sure. more often uh, what the people in their areas are doing so Thank you again. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate it. This was great. It is awesome, right? Yes. I love doing this part. See you in the coffee shop maybe Absolutely. tomorrow. I'll be here tomorrow actually. <laughs> Thank you everybody for watching. Stay tuned. More interviews to come like this one. Peace.